uh, we can um, uh, demonstrate this piece that will potentially you know remember this originated as a time as a timer application so maybe instead of saying start and stop maybe we could animate it as the timer goes on like this one right here shows like seconds are ticking and very similar application obviously I you know this one I'm, I'm using to time our recordings but this is something that we can uh, we can potentially um, uh, try to do in here so now recall the thing is is that so let me actually redo this one once again I'm just going to say new and don't say so the idea is this there is definitely an operating system component the operating system is very very well aware of each window right there is a, a graphical um, component of the operating system graphical user interface it pretty much watches everything that happens to any part of the user interface each mouse move each you know each everything is is under control of by the operating system the next thing that happens is that our program sits in memory and again I'm, I'm trying to show you that these are instructions in memory this is not a window the window may not be even visible it's really our program in memory right so it does receive notifications from the operating system uh, okay so then if we can receive these notifications on behalf of the user clicking the button right so someone clicks a button operating system knows about it and it lets us know and we are capable of then basically saying okay we have a function here which handles this event okay we call it a callback and we basically say hey button make sure that uh, we get this notification and it's not a, any kind of default processing Similarly, there is a system clock, right? There is a clock that uh, uh, ticking somewhere, uh, and uh, the operating system is pretty much aware of everything that's go that's going on. So we can then s uh, we can maybe ask the operating system to say, "Hey, why don't you notify us every you know uh, every millisecond or every second or every hour?" that you know the clock is ticking and we will want to wake up and call another function here part of our program which basically we will respond to a timer event essentially say we want to be notified you know every second well let's let's start with every second so how do we do this all right so that's the idea to 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 you know animate part of our program we say button start instead of printing printing uh, start this is what we can we can still print print start but this is what we potentially can do uh, we can say fl this is the namespace where full tech library lives and we can say um, uh, add uh, timeout right here the visual studio actually knows about it because it kind of goes ahead and browses all the source files so add timeout and that timeout will require us uh, to specify our timer timeout right you can see that I actually like to write uh, code for variables that don't exist just yet I will create it but but that's what it is right I'm not I'm going to be required to to do this and guess what just as was the case with the button I have to provide yet another static function so that there will be notification going to that function all right so that function could be well I guess I'll just uh, follow um, um, I guess um, I call it uh, timer event uh, timer event uh, mm, uh, timer event that that's good that's good enough short enough but descriptive enough so there will be some timer event notification and similarly with button clicks well guess what you still get the um, the luxury of uh, uh, passing uh, objects or any other da data uh, uh, as you want I think I convince you that in my button callbacks 
I was able to pass the address of my window to that callback. So why don't I keep the same uh, strategy and pass a pointer to my window all the way down to the uh, timer event. So every time a timer event kicks in, well guess what, I'm still going to get to my window to an instance of this object, which is really like a macro, you know, brain that sits uh, behind everything in my application. And so this can be very useful. So I can refer to, to the data and everything. So let's, let's try this. So number one, uh, the timeout is going to be defined, um, well, I guess I can do it directly here. I can say it's actually a floating point number, right? So I will say const uh, double. Uh, you know what? No, I need to keep this in global scope. So let me type it in: const double timer uh, timeout or whatever I named it, um, and it's going to be say one second, right? So this is one second. Okay, so it's a floating point number. This is what the timer timeout uh, mm, uh, thing needs uh, to do in order to, um, uh, you know, to, to, to start this notification loop. All right, so I will actually go ahead and define it uh, at the global scope right here, somewhere just on top of my you know, I can I can put it in my header. I guess that would be the most appropriate thing. Timer window uh, somewhere here in global scope. Just uh, a constant double ti uh, timer timeout. Uh, one second, uh, one point zero. Uh, so it re our interface requires us to pass a double. Okay, so here it is. So timer timeout now is defined. Timer event, of course, is going to be. Uh, um, you know, n none less than just another uh, uh, static function, but it's actually going to look much simpler than those two. So let me type it in. Uh, static, this is in my header file, void, uh, void. I named it timer event. And all it's going to take is just this user data. Okay, it's very simple, just the user data. Okay, so timer event is going to be invoked because we said we want to be invoked in one second interval and it should be invoked. All right then, so control C, going back to my implementation file and really anywhere in this code, I'm just going to do my thing. Okay, void uh, timer window, timer event, uh, pass the user data, create the body of this function, and inside this function, uh, if I want to keep this running, uh, the, the design is this, that um, if I did add a timeout, it's going to happen once. It's going to happen once, I will be invoked in this timer event, and guess what? I can do, I can basically test this functionality by saying, uh, timer, right? So let's see. So <clears throat> let's see. The start button says let's add a timeout and we want to call timer event. The timer event will be invoked. Inside the timer event we get our window back right away from the user data and then we're going to say uh, let's say timer at the, at the top of the screen. So save this, compile it, right? Compile it and uh, so once compiled, uh, we can run it. And when we say start, remember, start prints title, but then timer event kicks in in one second and you get that. So stop, start again, start in one second, we get an, another notification. So now, if we want this to run as an, a continued animation, you know, very simple animation. Then we need to come back here and say, hey, we want to do this again. We just want to do this again. We do our thing, part of the timer event, right? We want to do our thing, part of the timer event, but guess what? We want to run this continuously, right? So now, <clears throat> regardless of anything, that, anything else that we do, unconditionally, we say, 
once timer event receives once, it's going to say again and again and again and again. It's just just endless loop. So let's see this very simple modification. So save this, right? Uh, save, uh, run it again. Uh, control F5. So now, originally timer is not running. So I say start and timer and it just gets replaced. So, but then if I say stop, stop quickly gets replaced by timer because the timer is now running. It just keeps running and we, we keep, like I can press, uh, I can debug it and press, a, a, you know, set a breakpoint somewhere here in this function and I will be interrupted every second. I will go into the break mode and you will see that the call occurs. All right, one thing before we wrap, actually, let's, let's save this. Let's save this uh, fragment.